So in this video, I'm going to show the painting and creation of uh, this mask. And this is the child catcher from the movie Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. Um, I already did the sculpture and molded it, obviously, and made the mask, you know, did the casting. This is a foam-filled uh, copy of him. I've already done the seams and cleaned them up so he's ready for paint. The hat is also, uh, I sculpted the hat and made a mold and cast it, and that's right there. And I already painted it black. So that's done. So now I'm gonna paint him. And then I will put his eyeballs in, apply eyebrows, his hair, put the hat on, and then I will um, build the um, structure to complete his uh, shoulders and lower some parts of his chest, so he'll be a bust. So this is a video that's gonna show um, the painting of the mask and all those things I just talked about. And um, that's it. Stay tuned. All right, I put the um, f uh, basic flesh tone down, and then I used some red, and I very from a distance, I sp very lightly sprayed a little bit of red over that to give it that little bit of pinkness. So he started to come to life. Okay, so what I did next is I uh, very gently sprayed yellow on the brow, red on the cheeks and the nose, and then blue where the five o'clock shadow is. It's very subtle. Uh, and now I'm going to spray very, I'm gonna take basically white paint and I'm gonna very subtly mist it over the entire face to give him a pale, to kind of soften all this and make him pale and pasty. Uh, so that's gonna be the next step. So now I sprayed a little bit of white I misted it over the head, so it t cut down on the um, on the pop of color to you know just make them a little pasty and pale. And I'm going to let this paint completely dry before the next step. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is um, the paint is dry, so I have the fl base flesh colored down. I have yellow, red, blue on the face, and then I have white over that. So it's very subtle, but it's a very basic paint job. Now, what I'm gonna do now is I mixed up some, um, this is raw umber acrylic paint, but it's watered down. It's very watery. And I'm going to basically brush with a chip brush over the entire, not over the top and head of the back, because it's gonna be hair and a hat, but just basically the face, ears, all that. I'm gonna brush it on, I'm gonna slop it on, now, this is not, some people do a, um, what do they, they use color paint, they, they use a black or a brown, and they do, a, like, they wipe it on, they wipe it off. I forget the name of the term. I don't do that. I like doing this, um, and there's a reason why. Let me just do this. Because what's going to happen is, I'm, and this is why I do it very watery, because this is a very subtle effect. But I cover this thing in the paint, because when I sculpt, I put lots of small detail, lots of texture and everything, and I want some of this paint to stay in that texture, in those little, small little areas, but very faintly, and it will give a lot more, it, br it subtly brings out all that texture without being too over the top. It's subtle, it, it, it takes, a lot of the masks, I think when I see them, other people, start, they look very flat and that's because they don't do, or they don't sculpt a lot of fine detail and skin texture, they're very smooth. And, and it doesn't, I don't know, it looks kinda, it's missing something. So I do this and I just slap it, and that's really all I'm gonna have to do is, what I'm doing here. Underneath the nose, under the chin, all that behind, inner the ears, nothing else you're gonna see. Now, what I'm gonna now do is take my water bottle and I'm gonna heavily spray 
the entire head from the top so it runs down. I have cardboard down there. So it's not just gonna be getting all over the table. Um, okay, spray. And now I sprayed it up. I'm gonna take a little paper towel and there are certain areas if the water's pooling, I, I wanna carefully Remove that. Let me move this closer here. Okay. So I got to make sure. Okay, like, well, in the inner ear, I'm going to put some paper towels because I don't want it to. It'll never dry if I do that. I'm actually. And you can see, let me let me just blot some of this out quick. I'm just going to subtly. If it's pooling in certain areas, I don't want it to be because it'll take forever to dry and it will dry in a strain. If there's too much water there, it'll dry, won't be even. I can also just shake it a little bit and loosen some of that. All right, I'm gonna take a little piece of paper towel and I'm gonna just put it in the ear and that'll just grab a lot of that paint that's inside the ear itself. This one too. Okay. Um, under the chin, it always pulls up. Under the nose, just lightly dabbing at it to lift up some of the pools of watery paint. Okay. Uh, inside the eyeballs, some there's a bunch of water. I'm just going to stick a piece of paper towel in there. That'll sop up a lot of that excess water. Other eye too. And it'll soak up. Okay. Now, the reason I do this is you can see very right now, even on the forehead, let me turn this. I don't know if you can see, but a lot of that dark, that raw umber paint is in some of that texture. And it's wet, so it's very shiny. But when this dries, it's gonna look really good. And what I'm gonna do is, once this is, and I have to let this air dry completely. You don't wanna use a hair dryer or anything. I don't want any, any of that water to be pushed around. I want it to sit in those grooves even in the forehead lines a little bit. I want to let it dry naturally, I think in 20 minutes, half an hour. And then I'm going to come down and I'm going to repeat what I just did again. Another layer, another wash like that, sprayed and blotted. It makes a tremendous difference in the, uh, in the look of the mask. It gives it a very lived, like a living uh, skin tone. It, it makes it look like he's been out in the world. It doesn't have this flat, plastic, slick, look. So I'm going to let this dry. All right. So the first, uh, layer of that, uh, raw umber wash is dried. So I'm going to do the second. So I'm going to mix more paint with my chip brush and just, again, paint it on the entire part of the mask that's going to be seen. I don't need to worry about whether it's going to be hair or hat. Slap it on there. This is watered down raw umber paint. It's acrylics. It's not thick. Because so I don't want to just trying to put a light watery coating on. It's going to get in all those texture spots, all those pock marks and skin texture. It doesn't need to be put on neatly. It's just covering it because it's all going to be blotted off. Make sure to get underneath the chin, neck, and even then the neck isn't really going to be, it's going to have clothing on, but you know, it's the front, so I'm just going to do it anyway. All right, under the eyes, 
all that in their ears. Spray heavily from the top on the on the sides in the ears. Okay. And you can you know make sure that water's moving. Shake a little bit. Keep it. I'm running down. I'm not going to blot as much this time because I do want some of that water to stay. I just don't want pools of it, so it's working its way down just by shaking it. Okay. Now, wipe my hand off and uh, there are some spots I will blot gently because it's like leaving streaks running down the sides of the face and there's an air bubble here, a water air bubble. Let me just pop that there. And I'm just going to lightly I don't want, you know. And even though you're not going to see this part of the neck because it's going to have the shirt um, the, hang, the neckerchief Mainly the face this is done for. But, okay. Blot under the chin. And make sure, let's see. All right. And I'm going to get inside the ears, inside the eyes. Sometimes the in the eye sockets, the water pulls up. Get in that ear a little bit. And this ear. some of that pooled water away okay and inside the eye socket some water gets in there piece of pigtail ripped off now I got that and then in this eye there's more brown water more and I just want to look there's a little bit of little dark brown spot under that nostril let me get rid of that good and I think that's it okay so now I have to let this air dry and uh, let's take a quick look here Harsh light makes it hard to see. Let's take a look. I think I'll be able to inspect this better and show you better when the when the uh, paint isn't wet because he's very shiny right now. So I'm going to turn this off. The uh, raw umber washes are dried. I don't know if you can tell or not. If you look at the back of the head where it's, there is no wash. And if you look over here, you see it's very subtle. Some spots where they're, the darker brown is subtly in the skin tone. Very subtle. Wish the light wasn't so harsh down here. But it does make a difference. And I'm gonna continue painting. Okay, so what we have now is I took some um, dark brown nightshades paint, watered it down, and painted with a fine brush very faintly um, all the folds and those lobial folds around the eye bags, the, the, uh, all the folds in the skin subtly. And I'll let that dry. 
and I painted the inside of the mouth. You can't really tell. Um, the tongue in there and the inside of the top of the mouth, dark brown, which you can barely see anyway, but it's got to be done. The teeth, by the way, are going to be put in last. So castings of my, actually, ca I'm using castings of my own lower teeth that I made a few years ago. So I'm going to make a, a cast a set of lower teeth out of plastic, paint those with acrylics. And they, I sculpted a little ledge inside the, uh, behind the lower lip where the, the teeth will sit in there. And then I'll just epoxy, mix up a little bit of epoxy to keep them in place. So uh, I'm gonna let this dry. So this, you know, a mask like this is subtle. It's a subtle paint job, but it's done in stages. So I'm gonna let the, the brown paint dry and come back to it. All right, so all the raw umber washes are completely dried. And uh, see, it, it gives it, again, with this lighting, I can't know if it works or not but it gives it a very nice, the skin tone, gives it a very nice lived in look. Um, definitely doesn't have a flat appearance. Okay, so all the washes are dry. I did a little bit more dark brown uh, in some shadowy areas. Let me just turn this light. Um, also painted the inside, you can't really tell, but inside the top of the mouth and uh, brown and the tongue is pink, still drying. So that's pretty much it for the paint job for him. Okay, so he's pretty much painted. I did a little bit more shadowing in the inner eye uh, above the, under the brow and in this uh, forehead and a few more spots here and there just touched up some dark brown um, painted the upper portion inside his mouth dark brown and I did a little bit more pink tongue color on the tongue which is still wet so now I just have to um, spray some uh, a little bit of gloss over him just to give his skin a slightly living moist look so slightly flat now just want to give a little bit of moist look a little bit of gloss and then um, I'll stick the eyeballs in when that's done. Do his eyebrows, so the cast. Uh, I gotta get the silicone mold I made of teeth, of my teeth. I gotta cast a set of lower teeth to put in there. Paint those and I'll glue them in. Then I can put the hair on and the hat. And uh, I, once I get all the clothing in, I'll uh, build a, a um, lower body out of foam so I can put the clothes and have a bust made of him. So, you know, not a difficult paint job, but it's very subtle, but uh, still more stuff to do. Now that he's completely dry, he just needs a coat of gloss uh, airbrushed over him. But until I do that, I'm gonna make his teeth. I'm using Easy Flow 120 from Brick of the Yard Multiply. Uh, I'm gonna mix up equal parts of that and put them in the Silicone mold. This is a silicone mold I made of my own teeth. I only need the bottom teeth. That's this part. So I'm going to mix this up, put it in there, cast some teeth. Okay, so you, you just saw the time lapse of me building this. Now, all it is is upholstery foam and Gorilla Tape taping it in place. And it may look odd, but see, the thing is, you're never going to see anything other than the head. And I don't do arms or anything on when I do a bust. So this shape is going to be, once the clothes are on, it's going to basically fill out the clothing so it's going to look good this is just a structure for the clothing to sit on that is close enough to the upper body of the character the actor who played this role is a very diminutive ballet dancer sir robert helpman so this is pretty much all i really need as you'll see when the thing when the piece is finished to put the clothes on the shirt the vest the jacket 
this structure is going to fill it out enough that it's going to look fine. You'll see. Still have to do the gloss on his mask. Next, airbrush the gloss on there. Then I'm going to put the eyeballs in. And then uh, I guess I'll do his eyebrows, then the hair, then the hat, then the clothing. Still lots to go, but he's coming along. These are the teeth. I took them out of the mold of my lower teeth. They're a little dirty because I stuck them in the mouth before. Let's see how they fit. They fit good. They still have to be painted. So I will do that later. All right, so he is completely, he's glossed. He's painted, he's glossed, he's ready to go. The teeth still have to be painted. I have them on a piece of cardboard. They're gonna be painted later. Right now, I'm gonna put his eyeballs in. These are 28 millimeter uh, blue eyes. Uh, Fourth Seal Studios makes them. Um, they have some bloodshot in there. Um, these, I had these laying around. I was going to order a set of eyes and wait a week for them to come, so I'm using these. Um, the bloodshot part, you won't even see. Now, I mean, it doesn't really matter. They look cool. Um, what I'm going to do is, I'm not going to have him looking straight ahead. I want to have him doing side eye, like he's looking, because the character is looking for children, because they're illegal in, um, in uh, oh, where the hell, in Chitty Chitty Bang Bang, it's... Um, Bulgaria, that's it. So anyway, so I'm gonna have him looking that way, like he's looking for children and he's searching. And like he has a, he uses his big nose because he can smell children. So he's gonna be looking that way. Not extreme, I don't want it completely that way, but anyway. So I'm gonna put the, the eyes really make this thing come to life. It's really fun. So anyway, I gotta maneuver them around. So I'm gonna put them in and don't want them looking down like that. I gotta turn them a little bit so they're going that way. And I got them a little bit more. I sculpted his eyes wide open like that because I want him, the character, to be bug eyed almost. Like he's, ah, I found the children. Ha ha. That's good enough for now. I'll probably shift them around, but. This one in. They have to match. I mean, you can't have one eye looking one way and the other eye looking the other way. Okay. This one's too low. This one's good. I gotta shift this one so it's equal to that. So I'm gonna have to probably take it out. Let me see if I can just shift it around. Oh, that's pretty good. Let me see. I gotta make sure the eye lids are Hmm. Now this one's pointing down a bit. Hold on. I may have to take it out and put it back in. Let me see if I can get this. Oh wait. Well, that's better, I think. Yeah. Okay. Let me just make sure that they're in all the way. Okay. Oop. Let me see. one could still go a little bit more that way. Hmm. I 
I could be a little bit anal about this. Till I'll know when I'm happy with them. I don't, that looks pretty good. Let me take a look, let me stand back. I think that's good. Move this light again. There are children here somewhere. I can smell them. <laughs> okay. I am going to paint the teeth next, insert them. I will do the eyebrows probably tomorrow morning and then do the hair tomorrow and stick his hat on. Oh, I know, let me get the hat. jacket I don't have yet I have to that's ordered it's coming Thursday so I don't have that here's his hat and I will just oh I have to missed a spot painting the hat I gotta fix that um this is his hat even though it's not there's no hair in his head yet but the hat will go well I'm way too close That's his hat, but it looks a little weird because he has no hair or eyebrows or teeth, but that's the hat. All right, I'm gonna stop this video now. All right, so I glued a black wig onto um, his head and I gave it a bit of a haircut and I'm styling it right now. Um, his hair, the hat is gonna be attached permanently, so you're not gonna see any of this. Part of his hair hangs down in front of the ear on his character. It's completely seen at all times, most, most of the time. So he has a big lock of hair that hangs down in front of his face, and the rest is in the back. And it's greasy too. So I put a little Vaseline in here, and I'm slicking it up, and I'm cutting it, so it's not styled yet. But right now, I'm going to take a break. I have started painting the teeth. I have to add some brown to that. And I'm putting a, the hat, put a little bit of foam fill in here. I have a stick coming out of here. And this stick, I'm gonna put some more foam fill in. This stick is gonna be sticking out like this. And then I'm gonna drill a hole in the top of his head where the sticks are gonna go in so that the hat will be permanently on there. That's what I'm up to now. All right, so just uh, laid the hair for the that eyebrow. It's still wet. Um, the way I do eyebrows is I use hair, and I put it. I, but all right, let me explain. Now this is very bushy because what I the way I do hair eyebrows is I lay it on thicker because I can always trim it because I don't want to sit there doing tiny little hairs. I I I, I don't punch hair much. It's, I think I could do a pretty good job laying it uh, manually. So when the glue is dry, I'll trim this hair so it's not so bushy. But I'm gonna, I did this one. I'm going to do this one live. So what I do is I have my Mod Podge and my brush. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint a little of the Mod Podge where I want the eyebrow to be. And then when I lay the hair down, I'm going to start at this end of the eyebrow and work towards the center of the head. So I'm just going to paint. I don't need too much. That's a hair on this brush. Wait a minute. A little bit of hair. Okay, that's enough. So I paint it here. This stuff dries clear. And I'm, you know, I want him, he's an angry guy, so I want him his eyebrows downward a little bit, like that. Okay, good. 
Now, take a little bit of the hair. I don't need much. That's even too much. Just like a little bit. I'm going to trim the edge so it's a nice line. Lay it like that. Take the brush. Add it down like that. And now, I'm gonna continue on top of that. Again, just patting the end down like that. Use your finger a little bit. I'm not putting a ton of hair. They're eyebrows. Even though they're going to be trimmed, you don't want to put too much hair. It'll look like a big caterpillar crawling on the character's forehead. So. I remember I'm working my... It's not going across, it's going down now because he's kind of an evil character. So I'm just laying it on top like that, and gently with a very fine brush. As I get towards this part, I'm gonna do it thinner because I want the hair to not, not all of a sudden end abruptly. I don't want it to be too heavy looking. So, we can start to use a little bit less hair And fan it out a little bit, like that. I'm going to put one more piece uh, at the end of that eyebrow, and that should be enough. Very thin. Like that. Okay, that's going to go right. Right there. Good. Got a piece of hair. Okay. Very gently. I'm just going to put a little bit of, a very little bit of glue on this brush. Let me, actually, I need a tiny bit more glue. Just want to make sure that's going to be in place. Tiny bit. Yeah. And it's got to dry clear. It's, it dries, this this particular type of Mod Podge I use dries, it's clear and it's matte, so it's not going to be shiny. Okay, now uh, the few little hairs, I'm just going to take these scissors and cut them off. Because I don't want to do that after the glue is dry. I'll do it while it's wet. A couple of small little hairs. Okay, and now we're gonna take another brush, not the, not the one that had glue in it, that's a dry brush, and I could just shift a few things. Since the glue is still wet, I can shift a few hairs around on the end there. They're all, they clump up a bit. Eh, 
That's good. All right. So this has to dry. And then I can style the cut them and style them because they're really bushy now. But it's always easier to put hair on when it's thick and you can trim it than trying to put hair on that's like really fine and short. Good luck with that. All right, I'm going to let this dry. All right, this glue is, should be dry enough. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a toothbrush and I'm going to basically comb out, comb the eyebrows in the direction I want. And see, it's going to take all the extra hair. The hair that didn't catch on any glue is going to come right off. It's only going to keep the hair that is glued on. So first I'm going to do that. And this glue, this glue, Mod Podge dries pretty quick. So I'm not pushing hard with this. I'm just gently just rubbing through it and it's removing, you know, excess hair. So I'm gonna do that just to get any excess hair off. All right, that's good enough. Now, little scissors. And you know, eyebrows, are not supposed to be this thick, so I'm gonna start at the back here. I'm just gonna trim. This is why I put hair on eyebrows thicker because I can always trim it. You know, like all this is way too thick. Let me get some more light over here. Okay. All right. Doesn't need to be this long. Let's thin it out. And here too. Just do it based on what looks right to you. And you can use your toothbrush again to just go over that. Any little hairs that are, you know, loose will come right up. Any hair that is glued on will stay. You know, you put it on thick, you can thin it out this way. You know, like some of that hair that's too long, especially you don't want the hair too long towards the, towards the, uh, beginning of the brows, eyebrows, so just trim it on an angle. You don't want to cut it off just like a, like bangs, you know, all uh, right. Okay. And then you can use your fingers to kind of, you know, style it. And you can put a little hairspray on your fingers if you want a very specific look. I gotta cut off a little bit right here. A little too thick. There, that's good. Fingers again. Okay. You also wanna make sure that no little hairs fell into the eyes or on the face, which they do. All right. I think this is good. So now I'm going to take a little bit of, um, I'll use this Aussie Instant Freeze hairspray. I'm just going to spray a little bit on the tip of my index finger. A little bit. That's even too much. And it's a little bit wet. I'm just going to one. 
And the great thing about hairspray is once it's dry, I mean, once you, if it's, you know, like if I feel like I want to reposition these eyebrows, you know, hairspray reactivates if you just wet your finger. So like, you know, two weeks from now, if I want to, you know, fix these again, I could just wet, put a little bit of water on my fingertips and move it around. All right, now I'm just going to want to lift the hair up a little bit, make it a little bit poofy. Use the toothbrush again. Just lift it up a little bit. I don't want him pressed flat against his head. I mean, they should be a little bit dimensional. With evil characters, you can play with their hair, hair, eyebrows and make them a little disheveled looking. They make them look crazier. I don't want, you know, you don't want eyebrows to be plastered against the head like flat. You know, make them a little bit dimensional. See, now that I did that, I can see there's a little bit of hair here. Actually, let me get, let me cut that little piece off. And then with these tweezers, I will just remove that because it was bothering me. All right, I think, wait, I want to also trim this little piece off. There. Remove that. Good. All right, I think. Is it good? So now. Eyebrows are done pretty much. And now I just have to um, put the hat on his head, and I will be doing that momentarily. Okay, so we're going. Whoa! These are the teeth, these are the castings of my own teeth that uh, I'm gonna now put in the mouth. And after they're put in and placed and in the correct area and they look good, I will then mix up a little bit, whoa, mix up a little bit of epoxy to lock them in place. That needs to go to the left. Oop. No, I think. Oh. There's still some, I guess, paint in there. All right, let me clear that out. Oh, yeah. Ooh, gross. Oh, slippery. All right. Oop. I guess some of that black watery wash is still in there. Nasty. All right, let's put these teeth in. And that's pretty good. I think we go to the left a bit more. Just a little bit there. There we go. There's one Caesar. Mm. No, too much to the left. All right. No. Hold on. A little bit more that way. Hmm. Oh, that's good. That is good. All right. I like that. I'm going to leave it. I'm going to mix up a little bit of a pop. Let me turn this thing so you can see this better. That's good. So, let me lower this. 
down a bit. So those teeth are in a good spot. I'm gonna mix up some epoxy and put it in there and lock them in place. And then I'm gonna let this sit for an hour, let that epoxy, I'm not gonna do anything with the hat. The hat's right there. See the stick coming out of the hat? That hat is, that stick is foam filled into the, the top of that hat has some foam fill, you can see? And then I'm gonna drill a hole in his head and ka-chunk that hat in there so it's locked in place. Anyway, I'm gonna let, I'm gonna epoxy those teeth and let it dry. All right, so I epoxied the teeth in, just putting a little bit of epoxy also on the lip, lower lip to give it a little bit of a shine. And uh, now I'm gonna let this set. Okay, this is gonna be really cool. So I peeled the wig back. I took the drill, as you saw, and I drilled through the, I peeled the wig back and I drilled a hole into his head and I cut a hole into the wig here so it lines up. And this stick in the hat, I had to cut the stick down, but you see, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mix up some epoxy, put some on the end of the stick and in there, and then I'm gonna take the hat and stick it and place it on his head and that will, that glue will dry and will keep this, that stick is gonna keep it in the head. So if I travel with this, if I bring it to a show, if I if someone buys it, it'll ship, the hat's not gonna fall off. I wouldn't wanna glue a hat on just on the edges, it, it, that's never gonna hold. This is gonna hold it much sturdier. So what I'm gonna do is put this back. I have some epoxy right here, which I'm gonna mix up. Right now, Gorilla Glue two-part epoxy, make a whole bunch, that's plenty, okay, put the cap back up, these things are so messy, Ugh. anyway, I got my little popsicle stick, mix it up really good. And I'm gonna just put it on the, I don't need to put it on the inside the hole as much as put it on the edges of the stick, which is back here. I'm gonna glop it onto the stick. And it will, then when I put the stick, inside the hole, it will, of course, I mean, I'll put some on the edges of the hole, too. Peel this back. All right, that's, that's all we're gonna do. That's all we can basically do. Gotta remember, of course, to put the wig back before I put the, uh, and the front of this hat is, that's the front. Okay, so I'm just gonna stick. In the place I want, I want them cocked slightly to that side, a little bit down. I took them off the base before. Wait, let me put them back on here. So I can turn them. Okay. Went down a little bit, like, and I'm pressing down. This hair still has to be styled more, but. slightly to the side. That's good. So now the hat is in place. It's not going anywhere. All right, so 
now, I'm gonna give that a couple of hours. I don't wanna to touch that thing. Whoa. I'll leave it alone. Still have to do all the clothing. I have to style this hair, to make this a little more greasy and clumped up. But uh, also have to put the fabric band go around that and the bow. But that's for another another time. So far, we're good with this so far. So he's pretty much done. Um, since the last clip, what have I done? Let's see, the hat was attached with the um, wooden stick and a bit of epoxy on the stick put into the hole. So that's pretty much solid. Um, I also took uh, some faux crushed velvet fabric and wrapped it around the, the hat, like a hat, you know, like hats do. Uh, it gives a little bit of a different look than the, the regular black hat. It gives it a little bit of texture. And hats like this have a ribbon around. I didn't put a bow. I don't think I need to go that far. Um, I styled the hair a little bit more. I also put the clothing on. So he's got a white shirt, the tie, a black vest, and then this jacket. And I just kind of cut the, this is a full length jacket, but I had to cut it down pretty much mostly off just because it's a bust. I also wrapped um, some of the same faux crushed velvet. It's, it's cheap fabric. It's not like real crushed velvet. It's fake, you know. And I wrapped a band of it around the bottom just to kind of finish it off because this is a black wooden base. Um, the glue is still drying on some of these things. Um, the glue is drying back here. There's a piece of black tape here hold because I have some glue wrapped, uh, clear glue that's holding the band around the hat. Once it's, the glue is dry, I'll peel this black tape off. Um, I think this is better than the mannequin one. I, I think this is the second version of this. I think it's a better paint job. I think the hair is much better. Uh, and I made the hair look greasy, which it should be. Um, so I'm really happy with him. Um, so that's the child catcher from Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. Uh, I put also put the, a little bit of a, a gloss on the teeth, on my castings of my teeth down there. So I think he looks pretty good. I will lower this. So I hope you enjoyed this video of showing how I made, let me turn this light off, showing how I made the child catcher. Um, he's a character I really like from Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. And this is the bust I've made of him. And I think it's one of the best things I've ever made. So that's about it. Um, so I hope you've enjoyed this video. Um, he was really fun to make. Great learning experience. Um, I will continue to make more masks and busts, so stay tuned. And like the uh, child catcher says, lollipops all free today.